Welcome to the September edition of Local Image. I'm Judy Skyvoss. I hope you enjoyed a great summer season with lots of adventures. I know I did, but there's still time for more great adventures, especially with the help of a woman you're about to meet. She's a resident of White Bear Township and the owner of a business aimed at creating adventures designed with you in mind. Well, it started uh, years ago when I was little. You know, my mom used to always say, get outside and play, and that's kind of our motto at Wahoo Adventures, is really trying to get people out of the house, away from the computer, away from your phones, and getting outside and doing active adventures. So we really provide all the equipment, we provide all the food, we uh, provide all the gear that comes with it, um, all the logistics. You know, we, um, you bring your duffel bag, and that's all you need to do. We uh, moved to uh, White Bear Lake 23 years ago, and uh, we're really inspired by this, the, the, the lake and the biking and kayaking and canoeing that was going on right here. And it truly inspired you know, us wanting to um, get out of the corporate world and try something that really got other people outdoors as well. You know, we really focused on families when this company started. We really thought it would, was really important for families to spend time with their kids. We saw a lot of parents going to soccer games to watch their kids, but maybe a lot of time parents and kids you know, interacting. So we started our kayak camp first, but uh, along the road, you know, uh, women wanted to do some active adventures, get away from the kids and the family, and spend some time, some pampered time out in the woods. Uh, enjoying the active adventures together. And uh, one of our bigger demographics that I really hadn't thought of when we started the company was um, the baby boomers. Um, grandparents, uh, different than my grandparents were, they're so active and they really want to spend lots of time with their grandkids. So we kind of help that. And then um, the other busiest thing we have going on this summer is our kayak camp for kids 11, 12, and 13, where they come and spend, it's a day camp, where they spend the day with us learning safety and, and you know, how to paddle, but also we play a lot of you know, capture the flag and uh, wiffle ball and just the basic games and, uh, and do a lot of swimming when it's hot in the summer. I think a lot of times they don't really realize that we do it all, you know, so when they get there or that um, camping can be pampered. And um, so when they come on our adventures, they, they leave, um, I think, inspired to camp again, maybe get their kids out camping, um, try new things, um, test their uh, new goals. We have a lot of people who put personal best miles in on bicycling. Um, you know, they might have never kayaked 10, 15 miles before, so when they see that and achieve that, it gives them bragging rights on Monday when they get back to work. The best thing about uh, Wahoo Adventures is, is really the meeting the people. It's been really fun watching um, people come together, and it's really fun to see um, everyone come out and, and be inspired by what inspired me, the getting outdoors and having a lot of fun. We'll continue the adventure theme with my in-studio guest. We featured Bonnie Fournier and the Smooch Project last March. We've invited her back to the show to give us an update on Smooch as she has had the opportunity to take the project all the way across the globe to Bangladesh. And she's here today to share her incredible adventures with us. Welcome, Bonnie. Glad to have you back. Thank you so much, Judy. I'm really happy to be here. Let's start by reminding folks a little bit about the Smooch Project, why you started it, and what the goal of that is. Well, as many things, the Smooch Project began accidentally. It began with a, a photograph I took of my twin sister smooching me on the cheek, and that was the seed from which this project grew. It began in uh, April 2006, and I've been working on it now for the last seven years. I've photographed close to 4,000 people. Wow. The photo that I mentioned earlier where my twin sister was smooching me, every time I saw that photo my heart would lift. And I experienced that for over a year before I decided I wanted to find out more about that, F, that feeling, like mm -hmm. could I reproduce it. And so I held the first smooch shoot in the building I lived in in downtown St. Paul and I believe 14 people showed up and three dogs and two, <laughs> two cats. And what I found is that I could reproduce that feeling by looking at photographs of people I didn't know. Right. Um, but what I wasn't expecting was the response of the people that I photographed. Mm -hmm. And they overwhelmingly wanted me to continue the project. 
And you know, you encourage an artist to do anything, they'll just keep doing more <laughs> of it. So that's exactly. how it began. And But what's really neat is that you've taken this project across the globe to Bangladesh to experience what Smooch was like with folks there, right? How did that come about? Well, everything with the Smooch project is very serendipitous. Dipitous. Mm -hmm. I, I, you might. It might look from from the outsider that this is all planned, but it's not. <laughs> absolutely yeah. not. So I had a piece of um, photo equipment that I no longer used, a, a light meter, and I put it on Craigslist. And a man re and a person uh, replied to the ad, and their name was Joy, and he was from Bangladesh, and he had read about the Smooch Project because of my email address, and he wanted to. Uh, talk to he's a very excitable energetic man yeah. and, he, and he talked to me about the hospital his family ran or founded and operated in Bangladesh how you know he thought it'd be a great project to bring there and frankly I was just interested in selling him this little gadget <laughs> yes. and I thought he was a little off his rocker because yeah. he was just so overboard with enthusiasm and he was going to Bangladesh the next day uh, to for a wedding and I am um, I did some research and I found that you know what he was saying was true and that it sounded like a really good connection mm -hmm. for me because our sh photos are already in hospitals here so when he returned from Bangladesh I said if you're interested I'd like to talk with you more about it and mm -hmm. that's how it evolved into I met his mother Tandra who was here with him uh, and she is the person who hosted me in right. Bangladesh. Right. And she is the one, I bet, who picked out this lovely outfit you're wearing. What's this called? This is a traditional Bangladesh outfit that women wear. It's called okay. a salwar kameez. The salwar is the loose trousers, mm -hmm. and the kameez is the, is, the, is the top with the long tunic-like look. It's just and gorgeous. The, and the sash. So she picked out the fabric. This was um, custom made, oh tailor-made while I was in Bangladesh. And this is the kind of clothing that women wear in Bangladesh yeah. for parties or for special events. This is not casual clothing right. there. Well, you obviously learned a lot with uh, spending some time there. You were there for like three or four weeks, were you? Three weeks. So you learned a lot about their culture. But specifically with the Smooch Project, you, you invited folks in to take their pictures. What was that experience like, and was it very similar or very different to your experiences here doing Smooch photos? Well, while I was in Bangladesh, I held three Smooch shoots, and each of them was quite different. And the, and the primary one that I went to Bangladesh for was to hold a shoot in the hospital that Tandra and her son Joy managed right. in the community where uh, Tandra's husband grew up. And that shoot was very different in that um, no one there, other than maybe hospital staff, spoke very much English. Right. And you've participated in a smooch shoot. Uh, and sometimes they're slow and sometimes they're fast. And I refer to this particular shoot at the hospital as my smooch shoot on steroids. Oh my goodness. Because it was pandemonium. The uh, power was out, and when it was on, I couldn't get my lights to work. So we were using uh, equipment that I wasn't familiar with. I was stressed about that. It was hot, you know. And, and in Bangladesh, people crowd you. And so there was no, I, I would often have to stop and, and, and use my to hands part. to say, just we need to make some more room here so I can move around. Right. And then giving them instruction, you know, I want your head this way or that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really challenging. I bet. What's your impression of what you captured? I was really happy with the quality of work I was able to gather from the hospital uh, despite the conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a learning experience for me. It was the first international shoot for the Smooch Project. And I, I expect that future international shoots where English is not spoken right. will be easier now that I've had that out of the way. Um, but people were so appreciative uh, of even being included in the project. And truly, one of the primary reasons behind the Smooch Project is to help people like you and I get accustomed to people from other cultures or other parts even of our own city mm -hmm. that maybe we might be a little uncomfortable with. But if we can relate to them, 
by the smooch of uh, they are showing affection to someone they love, it, um, it, it, that's the whole purpose behind the project. All of us share an equal wish to have joy and happiness in our lives. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's what the Smooch Project allows us to relate to someone that, that yeah. you, you know, someone we love, of course, mm -hmm. but also enjoy a photograph that of people that we would probably never meet. Right, right. And so that's what's really fun about the project. Well, and, and you're doing great things here with the Smooch Project. Obviously, it's going to continue, but like you mentioned earlier, some of your photos are in uh, some of our area hospitals. Mm -hmm helping to just bring some warmth to the patients and families that are in those hospitals on a daily basis and yes. that's a pretty cool thing. And that, your in your book, your book is about to come out, right? With yes, all these we're photos. Work, working on the first book. Yeah. So it's really fun how the project has evolved over time. Yeah. And our first book uh, you know, I have 17 or 18 in mind of course. So <laughs> um, but I the first book is Smooch Siblings and it's about brothers and sisters. Yeah. So I went through my archive of over 2,000 photographs so far, and I pulled the best of the best out of that group. And um, it's a, going to be a 40-page hardcover oh gift book, and it's stunning right yeah. now, and I, I'm really proud of it. Well, you should be, Bonnie. You've yeah. done some really exciting work for just kind of letting things happen it's really it's taken a life of its own and it's going to continue so congratulations on that if people want to learn more about smooch of course you have a website and i know you have a facebook page as well so exactly they can find out more there but thank you so much and we're glad to have you back and you look beautiful keep up the great work bonnie thank you so much judy thank Sorry. you now, I don't know if any of the people Bonnie met on her trip to Bangladesh are fans of the Minnesota Twins, but I do know that Minnesotans are huge fans of one particular member of the Twins family. Former team manager Tom Kelly led the Twins to two world championships during his tenure from 1986 to 2001. And the Twins organization retired Tom's number 10 jersey last September, and now this longtime Maplewood resident has been honored with another tribute, as you will see in this exclusive Local Image segment. Welcome to everyone. I'm Will Rosbach. I'm proud to be the mayor of the city. First of all, I have to say thanks and, and bless our stars because we're fortunate that in our city uh, lives Tom Kelly. And so we're, we're here because of him. Uh, we're here because of the twins uh, approached the city and said that they wanted to partner with us to produce a baseball field of this kind of caliber uh, so that they could uh, do more just to honor Tom and his uh, work over the many, many years for the Twins. Well, before the field was set for 60-foot bases and for smaller uh, smaller players, the second and third grade players. So what they did is they moved the infield grass out, they moved the fences out, they put in the dugouts, and um, signage and put a lot of work, big improvement. Very pleased to have with us here today uh, Dave St. Peter, the president of the Minnesota Twins, to say a few words on their behalf. Well, on behalf of uh, the Minnesota Twins organization and the, the Polad family, I, I want to say thank you to everybody coming out tonight. Beautiful evening, uh, particularly these these players over here. I guess I get the sense there's going to be a game here in a little bit, and that's really to me is what it's all about. Uh, about a year ago, uh, we had the distinct privilege of retiring the number ten and putting Tom Kelly's name up there with the likes of Harmon Killebrew and Rod Carew and Kirby Puckett. Ken Herbeck, Burt Blylevin, Jackie Robbins, names that are uh, synonymous with baseball, but in many cases synonymous with Twins baseball. And it was a great honor for us to retire number 10, and I think it's very neat that there's a number 10 here on this backstop. You know, we're blessed with a lot of people in our organization. Tom Kelly started out as a player, worked his way through the minor leagues as a minor league manager, minor league coach, came to the major leagues, became a major league manager, won two world championships, has his number retired. Um, he was very inspirational at the early stages of my career and uh, really deserves a tremendous amount of credit for uh, the Twins brand today and how strong it is throughout the Upper Midwest. Without further ado, Tom Kelly. Thank you to everybody for coming here today. Uh, Mr. St. Peter, 
our president of the Minnesota Twins, uh, I remember when he first started uh, with the Twins and, and uh, I watched him grow. And I remember telling my uh, uh, bullpen coach at the time, Rich Delmazic, that uh, we got to take care of this guy because this guy knows what he's doing. And, and he was really sort of on the bottom and he worked his way up. And, and I can't tell you what, you know, for him to come all the way over to this side or the right side of town and, and drive all the way back to the wrong side, it's, uh, it's, it's quite, it means quite a lot to me. The game of baseball is about the players. And we have players on both sides. We have players, I'm sure, in the back uh, wanting to play. But this is uh, uh, quite an honor to, uh, I like that number 10 hanging up there, that's a pretty good deal. But to, uh, I wish, I told Dave, I, I wish that I had a field this nice to play on. Uh, it makes you really appreciate what you have and the opportunity that you have. And uh, Dave's, Dave's right, the game's supposed to be fun. Have fun, play it the best you can. Keep your chin up at all, all times. And believe me, I wouldn't be here unless I had good players, and the Twins gave me a lot of really great players. So that's the only reason I'm standing here. So let's forget all this talk, and let's get the game started, because that's what everybody wants to see. Have fun well, it's a special. There's no question about it. Uh, it gives, uh, I don't know, it, for me, I, I just like to see the kids play, you know. So every time we, we drive by a, a ball field or a playing field of any sorts, we, we're always looking to see if the kids are playing. and you know, getting after it a little bit. And, and this is just another opportunity for the kids to play. And it, it looks like the Twins and the city of Maplewood have done a terrific job of fixing this one up and giving the kids a great chance to, to have some fun on a real nice field. So that makes it a lot, a lot of fun for everybody. I can imagine that you could go anywhere and live comfortably. Well, Why are you, what makes Maplewood Well, we like it special? Maplewood. Uh, it's uh, blue collar and uh, we like blue collar a, a real lot. And secondly, uh, the, uh, uh, the town has done just a great job of here. I enjoy it here. Uh, my wife's family is in uh, uh, Little Canada, so that's, you know, close for her, and, and I enjoy it. Actually, I enjoy the change of season. I stay pretty busy, and I get to do TV announcing every once in a while, so that's sort of fun. And, and uh, so uh, there's plenty to do, plus uh, there's a lot of weeds in my house, so we end up picking weeds too. But uh, I have a, you know, we, we stay awful busy, and, and uh, we just enjoy the area. If you were to give the twins a pep talk right now, oh. what would you say? Well, I think uh, once we get our pitching straightened out a little bit better, uh, especially our starting pitching, we get that going a little bit better, uh, a little more consistent, then I think we're going to be just fine, because I think we do have enough players to be successful. And uh, I think, but we do have to straighten out a few things in, in the pitching end of it. And once yeah. we get to that point, then we're going to move forward. And, and maybe have a, some more uh, world championships? Well, uh, let's uh, one step at a time. What's your name, Ben? What? What's your name? Ben. Ben, all right, Ben, here we go. You ready? Yeah. We're going to try to throw it straight. Why don't you stand up? So. Uh, <laughs> ready? Ow, oh, that hurts. Very good. That's much better. <laughs> What a gracious man. Thanks to the Minnesota Twins, the City of Maplewood, and the Maplewood Athletic Association for making that dedication and new baseball field happen. And speaking of making things happen, our local image friend Matthew Griswold is always making something good happen. We first met Matthew back in 2009 when he was one of the Minnesota singer-songwriters featured on the album Home for the Holidays, A Minnesota Christmas, and then again when he launched his own album, Screaming from the Witch's Tower, inspired by his tours of duty in Iraq. His music has inspired many here locally, and now it's caught the attention of TV and film producers in Hollywood. I spoke with him during one of his final Minnesota performances before following his dream to California. So when you feel like you're fading away, when you feel like you're fading away Just remove your disguise and look in its eyes And you won't recognize your own thing. This is uh, the Minnesota Singer-Songwriter Showcase 
at Plums. And uh, just about everybody that comes is, is you know, is to semi pro to pro. Yeah. And we'll come out, we'll try new stuff. Well, this is kind of bittersweet for our, your fans, like myself, oh, in well. the sense that you're leaving Minnesota, yeah. but it's for a really great reason. Right. Tell people what you're going to be doing. Well, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be making music for uh, for some people out in Los Angeles. The company is called APM Music. They're part of Universal Music Publishing, and um, it's, uh, it's it's kind of a, a continuation of what's already been happening. I've had a number of songs licensed over uh, for film and TV. I think about a dozen or so, and. Um, and even sports highlights and YouTube videos and all sorts of fun stuff like that. And um, it's uh, it's a kind of company that that is now sort of becoming a record company. The record industry is changing. Yeah, right, um, right. And so some new opportunities to make some music uh, directly for them uh, have come. And so I uh, decided to move out and take advantage of those opportunities. And, Avoid a winter, you know. I, yes. After last oh, winter, I was ready it was to. Was a tough one. To make but it some on. of your music from this recent album, right, came from this past winter. Yeah, it did. You yeah. just launched an album in yep. early August. Yeah, just like a few weeks ago, actually. Yeah. Uh, Solitary sessions, uh, rightfully called, uh, after some days of tough solitary winter. confinement in my own apartment. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the conditions of the winter and, and, a, and a recent breakup and had a lot going on. I ended up writing songs and I recorded them at the same time and after listening to them and sharing them with friends I thought, huh, it kind of sounds pretty good. And yeah. I did it all on my iPhone. I know, that's pretty And unique. you know, and they uh, it sounds studio quality and, and so, uh, and they're very raw, they're very uh, authentic and they're all acoustic so yeah. it's a little different than maybe some of the other stuff yeah. I've done. I mean, you're not a pop artist. Let's no, put that yeah, out there. So your songs are very thoughtful and provoking and right. emotional. And I mean, how would you describe your well, songs? Yeah, I, I like to think that they're a um, they, they, they capture an idea that um, that a particular side may not see, and then I try to pull it and create it, and maybe get that side to see yeah. it or something. You know, it's a it's a very communicative process. I try to communicate ideas and thoughts and feelings to a crowd that may not have seen them otherwise, or maybe they would have, and maybe they'll see it in a different way. Yeah. It's a song about love. It's a song about life. Oh, Bar Queen. Let me take you away tonight. For those of us who know you, ha has been very th therapeutic for you, and you've also helped others with that music in terms of therapy. Because you're an Iraqi War veteran, mm -hmm. and you did suffer some uh, post-traumatic post stress. stress yeah. And so you found when you came back that music, or even there in Iraq, music helped you. How's that going? Because I know you went on last time we chatted. Yeah. You were doing some music. Therapy kinds I just of got things. back from the music therapy yeah, convention where yeah. I spoke so how, about that. How did that progress since we last saw you? Um, well, it certainly, personally, is always progressing, and I, and I still go out to uh, the Minneapolis VA. Um, well, here yeah. while I'm still home. Yes. Um, I think I have my last time out there next week, uh, and still hanging out with veterans and talking about what music has done for me and and what you know. Even if even if another veteran hears my story. It doesn't even have to be music. It could be anything. It could be something right, that, that right. they oh, find. Right, right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's, and so hopefully yeah. it just kind of instills an idea of anything. Um, but yeah, even personally, you know, I still I still certainly have uh, things going on, and it's great to be able to turn to music. And that's why it's cool to have a place like this, because yeah. then I, I come and I try it out. I yeah. try it out in front of friends first, and then yeah. work into the audience, work into fans' lives. And, uh, and so it's got to be a process. And over five years, that process is saved my life. Yes, absolutely. And I know in reading an article recently about you, I mean, you have your eyes set, your sights set on an Oscar for your, for music writing, which is awesome. I think that's going to happen. Yeah, well, I'm sure it would be something. <laughs> no, thank you for that, um, for that support. And I... Uh, uh, you know, I've always dreamt of that more than even like uh, having a hit song. You know, like awesome. you said, I, I've never really been a, I've never aspired to be a pop musician, yeah. and I've always saw more, um, you know, more point of interest in, in films and things like that because You're storytelling. Yeah, 
And so it didn't surprise me that when uh, when this company picked up on my music, that that's that was going to be their focus, using it, in, yeah. you know, TV shows and films and stuff, because that's where it belonged. Absolutely. Um, and so yeah, it would be great to to be able to live up to, you know, what some of my influences and, and uh, heroes have done: Springsteen, Dylan, all uh, you know, all have contributed music and won Academy Awards and. Uh, and certainly now the door of possibility is open. Yeah, absolutely. And man, that'd be something else. You know? Well, now Matthew, let's get this out right now. Let's get you it out. Do not yep. forget the little people back oh, here in Minnesota. Oh well, they'll never, they will never be little. No matter what happens, <laughs> it'll never be a little, uh, little anything around yeah. here. It's always going to be home. And you've had a lot of great support. Yeah, absolutely. And it'll always be the core of who I am. And, yes. and you know, to be able to play as often as I have over the years, and to get to know the fans that I've gotten to know. Uh, that'll never change. Well, it's been a pleasure to get to know you over oh, these last you so years. Much. We talked briefly before we started recording. I've seen you grow in yeah. just three short yeah. years. I've seen you blossom. Oh, so thank you. congratulations. Thank you very man. much. You thank you very on, much. Keep on keeping on. We're going to also be hearing some of your great music tonight. So All right. Excellent. That. Excellent. Yeah. Right. So when you feel like you're fading away, when you feel like you're fading away, just move. Skies and look in his eyes, cause the dead cannot recognize pain. No, the dead cannot recognize pain. No, the dead cannot recognize pain. We wish Matthew all the best. Now, before we go, I'd like to ask that you join us in keeping our friend and co worker. Ray Widstrand in your thoughts and prayers. As of this taping, he is in long-term acute care at Regents Hospital after being violently attacked and beaten by a large gang of teenagers on St. Paul's East Side while he was out for a walk last month. Donations to help pay for his surgeries and other medical bills are being collected at any Wells Fargo bank. Just ask the teller to put it into their Ray's Fund account. We miss Ray at work and we hope his recovery continues to improve. And we want to thank all who have sent their well wishes and prayers for Ray. And please, please do keep praying for Ray. And until next month, I'm Judy Skyboss and I do thank you for watching Local Image. Mm -hmm.